Hello folks, uh, my name is Stefan Prodan. I'm a principal engineer at Weaveworks, and I'm very happy to talk to you about uh, Timony, a new tool I've been developing this year. Um, today's talk will cover what Timony is, how I got to build it, and um, how I made a Flux distribution with it for uh, having uh, Flux manage bare metal clusters and other use cases. Okay, so let's get started. Um, what is Timony? So this tool is a package manager solution. Uh, it's a, a statically built binary. Uh, it's written in Go. You can run it on any uh, operating system. It has no external dependencies. And Timony builds upon three, relies upon three uh, technologies. First is Qlang. Um, everything you'll be doing with, with Timony, describing uh, app deployments, orchestrating the actual delivery on clusters, all these things are um, uh, files on disk in a declarative way uh, written in Qlang. Uh, second, uh, Timony relies on the open container initiative uh, standards. Most precisely, um, Timony works with OCI artifacts, and this is how um, applications are being delivered uh, to end users and distributed uh, to container registries as artifacts. And lastly, of course, Timony is all about Kubernetes and especially relies on the Kubernetes uh, server-side apply APIs, which means um, Timony is very close to Flux in terms of how it uh, interacts with the Kubernetes API cluster. It basically uses the same engine beneath. Okay, so why Q? Why Q and Timony? Um, I discovered Q a couple of years ago. Um, I was at KubeCon at the Flux CNCF booth, uh, and um, a Flux user came to me and told me about, hey, I've been uh, giving up using Customize and Helm uh, with Flux, and now I'm generating all the uh, Kubernetes YAML using this uh, new language called Q. Um, and he showed me a little bit uh, the setup he built and so on, and I was like really, really excited. Went back home, uh, tried Q. Uh, it was quite hard at, at the beginning to, you know, uh, understand and change a little bit my mindset around how I'm um, composing Kubernetes uh, objects. Uh, but in the end, I, I, I really loved it. And, uh, Q has some really neat features, uh, which work great if you want to, you know, uh, generate any kind of config, not only Kubernetes, but especially for Kubernetes, uh, there are some nice features in Q, which makes it so appealing. Uh, for example, um, Q is all about type safety. Uh, you don't have, like, if you, if you want to create a deployment and, um, have some kind of templating into it, so you can change fields. Unlike um, Helm, which uses a text template or customize, which uses JSON patches, with Q, you can actually uh, import the Kubernetes deployment schema, for example, from the Kubernetes Go uh, APIs. And when you write the deployment itself, um, if you make a typo in a field, or if you add a field which is not there in the schema or in the wrong uh, position inside the schema and so on, uh, Q will actually let you know about it um, before you even produce the, uh, the final YAML. So in a way, it makes um, defining Kubernetes objects uh, uh, safer. And once you generated an object, you are quite sure that that thing is actually what Kubernetes accepts. Um, another um, nice feature of Q, but quite challenging if you come from the Helm and customized world is about immutability. And what that means is that once you set a field, let's say you write a deployment in Q and uh, inside the deployment, you say uh, replicas two. Later on in other parts of your Q module, you can't change that value anymore. If you set it to a um, concrete uh, value, like I want to replicas, you can later on change it. And that that could, you know, uh, <laughs> um, be quite quite annoying at first. Like, why wouldn't I want to change it? Uh, well, the immutability helps creating same configuration when this type of configuration is complex. You don't want to, you know, if 
if you are debugging a Helm chart template or some customized uh, overlay, uh, and you want to know how is this replica value set to this uh, particular value, right? It's like you have to go through all the um, touching layers or all through all the Helm uh, if conditions and figure out where exactly is this set to this different value. Uh, with Q, if you set it once, uh, if you try to override it, if you try to patch it, uh, Q will not uh, allow you to do that and to say, hey, this uh, field has already been set. So in a way, it, it, it makes you think differently about how you package your configuration and what things you allow your end users to change. And in my opinion, this um, makes for a better uh, model of distributing uh, app configuration to end users and uh, it, it makes you create a particular structure where you are defining all the inputs, all the things that you uh, accept uh, from users, and you have good defaults. Um, Q uh, QLang also has this defaulting system in place, and you only work with these two concepts. You no longer you know, modify something endlessly uh, until you get to the desired state. Okay, so who is Timoni for? Timoni, uh, is for two types of users. One type are the software vendors, the, the people that are uh, building the software and they want to distribute it um, uh, to their end users. So these are like off the shelf uh, uh, software, uh, open source software made by maintainers, uh, also um, software packaged uh, by platform uh, engineers and so on. So. Timony allows software makers to distribute, to package and distribute uh, their app uh, deployments. On the other side are the Kubernetes users, developers, operator who want, operators who want to use an off-the-shelf software or some open source software as described by the creator and also be able to customize it and, uh, you know, compose it in such a way that it fits with the uh, environment where you are deploying it. So what makes Timony a package manager? What are Timony's main features? They are all about uh, applications, how you define an app, how you distribute the app, how you compose um, microservices or dependencies and make your uh, uh, app as a whole before you deploy it. And of course, uh, it's all about application lifecycle management, how you install it, how you upgrade it, how you run end-to-end -end tests, and how you uninstall it and so on. Um, so app definition and distribution. App definition uh, from a T1 perspective is all around Q and Q modules. So a T1 module, which is the equivalent of a Helm chart, um, is an opinated, uh, Q module with a particular structure. And if you look here, I, I'm guessing you'll find the structure quite familiar. It has a templates directory uh, where you define all your uh, Kubernetes objects uh, there. Um, and it has a values queue, not a values YAML, it's a values queue where you define the defaults and so on. Um, so this is how a module looks like. Um, Timony offers commands for uh, uh, working with modules, how you create one from scratch, uh, how you uh, verify it, how you test it on your own cluster uh, before you distribute it. And it has nice, th nice things like you can apply it to the dry run, see what changes, how they are reflected on the cluster uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to distribution, as I said, uh, Timony works with container registries. So similar to Docker, there is a push command and a pull command. You also can log in and log out private registries. And it's also integrated with cosign. When you distribute a module, uh, you can also sign it keyless or with a, a private key. App composition and lifecycle. Uh, so here is a little bit where Timony is very different from Helm or, or Customize in terms of app composition. App composition for, uh, for Timony is done in a declarative way where you have this bundle object, which is just a Q file on disk where you can stack multiple instances um, and those instances can use different modules. So for example, let's say your application needs a cache server. So you could bundle a, a Redis deployment with your app or some other microservices and all together which have common values need to be deployed as a, um, 
single unit. So Tyranny can uh, act on bundles as they are a single thing. And another, another important aspect here is that when you configure your application, some, some configuration values you can provide inside the bundle file itself. But some values like uh, an uh, API token or some password or some, I don't know, DNS record, those values could be on the actual cluster and you don't want to put your secrets and all these dynamic values here when you uh, define the app in the bundle. So also Timony has a thing called runtime values when you can query the cluster right before you deploy your app, extract those secrets or those dynamic values and use those when you do the configuration. And this is how Timony avoids <laughs> uh, having the issue of you know uh, keeping secrets in Git in a single file and so on. Um, what type of operations? Uh, so unlike Helm, Timony does not have install upgrade. It's a simple apply command that takes the bundle file and it figures out if it has to do an install or it has to do an upgrade or it has to run only tests and so on. Um, you also can do a dry run apply to see how your local changes, what, what those values uh, mean on the cluster. Uh, and you can also see a live diff between the cluster state and what you want to uh, move to the new desired state. And bundles can also be distributed uh, in uh, container registries and so on. Um, um, last thing about bundles, there is also, uh, besides the, the, uh, the runtime values that I talked before, um, there is also a future in the bundle where you can tell Timony to deploy an app across multiple clusters and multiple environments. And inside the bundle, you can customize the, the app configuration based on the target environment. So with a single file, you can uh, drive um, uh, deployments to multiple clusters. Uh, and Timony does this in a, as a step-by-step -step process. So for example, if the new configuration fails on staging, Timony will not move onto production and deploy those changes. So in a way you can do promotions with, with this uh, future uh, and, and uh, rollbacks and, and other interesting things. Okay, so we got to the Flux IO part. So what is Flux IO? You uh, may be aware what is Flux. Flux is a, a continuous delivery tool which allows you to implement GitOps. Uh, it has all these controllers, uh, uh, source controller, which is specialized for getting definitions from outside the cluster, like Git repos or uh, S3 buckets uh, that contain uh, Kubernetes YAML. And there are other controllers like customized controller, which is a controller that knows how to apply customized overlays and plain YAMLs on the cluster. And that's how you uh, deploy uh, things from plain YAML. And we also have a Helm controller in there, so you can orchestrate uh, Helm operations in a declarative way. Uh, we don't uh, use the Helm CLI. This controller has uses the same uh, Helm SDK as the CLI and performs all the, the Helm actions on the cluster as Helm itself. Now, the main uh, challenge with the upstream flux and how it gets deployed is the fact that all these controllers run in their own uh, Kubernetes deployments. They are different pods. Uh, and if you have a bare metal cluster with no CNI on it, so everything is, all the nodes are not ready and so on. When you try to deploy a uh, Flux with the uh, Flux CLI or with, with Helm charts, you'll see that Flux will crash loop on the cluster because it can't talk to uh, the other controllers. Um, the readiness probes will fail and so on. So in order to allow people to deploy Flux on clusters, which are not quite ready, uh, I have created this uh, Timony bundle called uh, Timony module called Flux IL. There are other uh, modules in there, um, which basically have all the Flux controllers running as a single unit inside a single pod. All the communication happens on the loopback interface, and um, it runs the the liveness probes, the readiness probes are exposed on the host network. And so Kubelet can actually uh, see that Flux is running and it will let it run on a cluster which is not in a ready state. Um, there are other uh, things that you can do with Flux IO. For example, it's, uh, it's fine-tuned to be run on edge cluster with uh, limited resources. Um, it has a security-first approach. It will only do uh, HTTPS traffic outside the cluster. It can 
uh, no HTTP communication happens between pods because it's a single one. Uh, uh, works great on, on serverless clusters like um, uh, EKS Firegate or GK Autopilot and, and things like that. Okay, so let's see how we can um, install Flux. Like all things in, in, in Timony, you create this bundle file and um, you give it Timony, Timony applies it, and that's how you uh, uh, create a deployment on the cluster. And this is how uh, the Flux deployment looks like. You can uh, fine tune here uh, a bunch of things. You can enable, disable Flux controllers. You can uh, run it on the host network or not. You can enable multi tenancy. Um, you can set up proxies and, and, and a bunch of things. So it's very um, rich in customization. Um, Okay, you deploy Flux, but then your cluster is still in not a ready state. So uh, Tioni uh, also comes with a bundle for uh, orchestrating hand releases with Flux. So after you deploy Flux, then you can tell Tioni, hey, configure Flux to deploy some uh, CNI and so on. So other cluster add-ons and, and all of that. Uh, and multi-tenancy. There is a, a Flux tenant module for Tioni, which allows you to onboard and offboard easily tenants. Uh, set up resource quota for them, uh, set up restrictions in terms of RBAC, what they can do on their clusters. Uh, and of course, onboard the Git repositories where uh, all these different teams, tenants uh, can mean many things, but let's say a tenant is a team that you don't want to give them full access to the cluster and restrict them to uh, one or more namespaces. Um, with Timony, you can uh, create all the RBAC things that Flux needs on the cluster and then onboard um, in a safe way uh, all the Git repos belonging to a tenant. Okay, that's enough talk. Let's see how this actually works. I'm going to demo now uh, Flux.io on a cluster. So I have a cluster running here. Let's look at the nodes. So I have a, it's a kind cluster. Um, the single node that is running is not ready because it has no uh, CNI installed. And now I I'm going to deploy uh, Flux uh, using uh, the Timony module. So uh, let's look a little bit how this how the file looks like. I'm doing cat bundles flux io dot cube. So this is the definition, and I can apply it with um, sorry with Timony bundle apply minus F and I'm going to give it this um, definition. So I'm running this, what, what Timony does, it pulls the definition from uh, uh, GitHub container registry where I have published the, the module and it quickly has deployed Flux, all the custom resources, uh, the deployment, the controllers and so on. So now I have Flux running on the cluster. It has worked very fast because I have preloaded the images, so we don't have to wait uh, for Kubernetes to download all the Flux images. But if we now look at the um, pods in this cluster, we see that we have a pod called Flux with uh, four containers inside. These are all the Flux controllers. And we also have core DNS, which is currently failing and is not ready. Uh, but Flux is running and it's, uh, it's ready uh, for me to provision the cluster with the CNI. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, apply the, going to extend my current bundle uh, with a cluster add-on. Let's look how this looks like. So we have um, the Flux instance that I previously <coughs> created, and I've added a new thing called Cilium, which uh, uses this Flux hand release module and sets up the uh, Helm values, where the chart comes from. I'm telling Flux to keep Cilium up to date and Flux every hour with check, oh, is, is there a new Cilium version? Let me upgrade the cluster and so on. Okay, but let's apply this and see um, how it goes. So now I'm <clears throat> reapplying the same bundle and what uh, Timon is doing, it will check, oh, is Flux ready? Do I have this prerequisite? Everything is fine and now it has went uh, to the Cilium um, instance. It has created, generated on the cluster, a Helm repository for Cilium and a Helm release. Then it has told Flux, hey, begin and deploy all of that. And it waited for Flux to acknowledge that the, uh, the Helm release must be installed. Now let's see what's happening now on the cluster. If I'm doing get pods, 
seeing that uh, Cilium has started and it has um, uh, created the Cilium operator, uh, the Cilium daemon set and so on. And at some point I should be able to see that the whole cluster comes up to life. Um, yeah, so that was the quick demo. Uh, if you like what you saw, please um, go to timoni.sh. Uh, there is a Flux IO documentation there. Uh, you can play with it. Um, yes, and I encourage you, if you try this new tool, if you try Clang, please let me know. Uh, uh, open an issue if you have any kind of, of uh, problems. Reach out to me on Slack. Uh, I'm on CNCF Slack, uh, Stefan Pronon. Thank you very much.